Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to discuss three reasons why the Heat absolutely smoked the Bulls, and in particular how they used that to get into the play to, to the actual playoffs. We're going to focus in particular on their defense, which I believe was truly elite. As you can see, they have 89 points with 24 seconds left in the game. That is good, good defense. Let's go. So the first thing is any defense is going to, in particular, allow certain shots. And so we want to ask what kind of shots is their defense allowing? I believe the Miami Heat are essentially allowing difficult perimeter shots and not allowing shots at the rim. That is their philosophy. And I believe that philosophy is a very, very good one. So one, we can see that the big over here, the Heat is paying more attention to Alex Cruz, who is driving downhill and leaving this little mid-range jumper open and even a late close up by Jovic, no hand up. They are allowing that shot intentionally. The reason they're allowing that shot is because he's just going to shoot a lower percentage on average than Alex Caruso as a layup at the rim. The second example of where the Heat just absolutely, uh, this blew my mind, is them on defense and transition. Transition on offense is the single easiest, most efficient way to score points. And so the Heat know on defense, you got to provide extra effort. So the first thing is like, look at the effort of all five players. They are sprinting down the court to get back. Like this is like, I understand this is playoff basketball. And so like intensities are revved up. But, like, this is, like, you don't see this kind of effort from five players on the court very often. They sprint back, and they are all getting back in the picture to contest this layup at the rim. That, like, that's impressive, even if there was potentially a foul there. And then another example, as this ball gets stolen right here, you have one-on-one. -on -one. You have a lot of teams that would simply stop running after the play and allow Caleb Martin to play one-on-one. -on -one. What do we see again? Sprint, 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 sprint. That is unbelievable, man. Like... Majority of teams just do not have this kind of buy-in from a top to bottom level. And so that is mad impressive. Caleb Martin does a good job just simply slowing down the process and allowing the shot blockers to get back in the picture. And the shot blockers do an effective job at what they're best at. And then the third and most important area, in my opinion, is essentially on offense or on defense, they're providing extra help whenever they can. So if they have someone that's a non-shooter, someone that's not going to have a quick release off the three, someone that maybe shoots it at 33% or below, they're going to help down a little bit and make it so you don't see a whole lot of open drives at the rim. Okay, so first off on this Alex Caruso drive, you have one, we're watching how Jovic is going to shade over a little bit, make Caruso pick up the ball here. And then two, okay, so here he helps over a little bit. He's still keeping an eye on his man, but he doesn't want Alex Caruso to get a layup at the rim. You don't want that. Okay, all of these defenders are... Not quite helping because they have shooters on the perimeter. However, Bam Adebayo is waiting for essentially Caruso to turn his back. And then he is aggressively going to help down as well. And he gets a nice piece of that ball on the way up. And the announcers even commented on this at one point how Caleb Love was able to get really good looks at the rim in the last game against the Heat. At, or against the Hawks, but wasn't able to against the Heat. And the reason he's not able to is look at how Hero and look at how Martin are playing. Okay, so these are good shooters out here. And however, they're staying semi-attached to the shooters, but they're also providing just a little bit of help in this gap to make it so Love just has that much more difficulty of a time getting downhill. Like, look at this. Like, if you can't snap this ball out to Caruso and he makes a play with it, then the Heat are exposing essentially a flaw in your system, and they're going to be able to punish you on defense and force you to shoot difficult step-back threes. And while he can make those for sure, that is a hard, hard shot. And then one other asterisk in this is Jovic in particular. So Jovic is a long, big, but he's relatively athletic for a big. And so he's able to at least stay semi-guardable with these guards on the perimeter. And not only that, but Bam out of bio, probably, I mean, frankly, one of the most athletic bigs out there. And so that gives your defense a lot of versatility, having those kinds of players that can contest good, good, quick athletes on the perimeter. And then finally, no defense would be truly, like, its own good defense unless you have really good individual defenders so Caleb Martin isn't known as a great defender but he played really really well and frankly like even getting beat a step right there so first off one thing we notice what is this defender doing he's helping down making it just a little bit harder on the drive hey that is Miami Heat their priority is they're going to say we're going to make your drives harder and this right here although that doesn't like show up in the stat sheet no one really notices it this could have slowed him down just enough for Caleb Martin to technically catch up and be able to get a great block. So in general, the Heat are making sure you can't get layups in the rim. They're helping down aggressively. They're playing aggressive in transition, and they have really good, long, versatile defenders. And that is what I believe makes the Heat a very good defensive team, as we saw in their smacking of the Chicago Bulls. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. 
Have a blessed rest of your day.